Hello, good afternoon, and welcome. Um, Going to do something different today. Um, not a regular five, Facebook Live. That'll be at five o'clock. This is an earlier time slot in case you're watching in replay. And we're having a conversation about the masculine and feminine. And I'm waiting for my friend Gina to jump in so I can add to the conversation and we can go live together. So this is going to be a um, unscripted, open-ended, and ideally informative conversation between myself and Gina, so that we can have some help people. Oh, there she is. All right, let me just see if this works. Uh, add. There we go. Drum roll, please. Let's see what happens here. Coming on. Yes. It's connecting. Oh, we'll see the signals. There you are. <laughs> Hey, how fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yay. All right. How are you? I'm good. How are we doing this? How's my phone look? Do I have to do that special thing or can I? I'm... If you prefer to be back, would you can be? <laughs> I forget it's what up to you, you said. I, I, like to being that, I like leaving this way around because that way when people see me in person, I look the same as I do on camera. Right. Because, you know face reverse thing looks different. And also when I show props like my book or other things, they can read the title, so that's just me. Yeah. Well, anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can go through all those instructions right now. Uh, it took me a while to get used to it, so it was practice, you know. Right, okay, there, I'm gonna share mine. Okie dokie. That's right, I should do there. that. There. What, what, yeah, what are we going to talk about? I mean, I know in general. Well, I, well, I, well, I titled this is um, What is Masculine? What is Feminine? A Conversation Between You and Me. So it's open season. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, I've had some fun questions that we've brought up in my Facebook lives, but I forget what they mm -hmm. are right now. Do you remember? Okay. <laughs> Stop okay, I remember. I remember. Um, so, hi, Allison. How are you? The, the okay, third. wow, huh? Sorry, I'm seeing my friends too, so I'm like seeing them. Question I had about, like, you know, I was talking about how I'm just all sort of flighty tidy and doing a lot of spiritual stuff, but I feel like I needed that masculine energy from that so quote unquote partner to ground me. But then I was listening to Matt Kahn and his latest book, and he's like. Actually, you need to balance those energies within yourself first. What does that look like for right. you? What does that even mean? Well, this is well. Let me let me listen framework because this can help make it easier to understand. Because the reality is, a lot of people have this habit of associating, associating masculine with male and this, and feminine with female, because they have the same first letter. You know that sort of thing. <clears throat> For what I've learned over the years both intentionally and accidentally, is that we do have both inside of us. So we both, we have both masculine and feminine in um, our makeup and how we mm -hmm. express and communicate in the world. So I'm not necessarily saying agreeing with what he said about, about integrating them together, but I am speaking of, I do recognize that if you feel like you're missing something, you need somebody outside, that's a mistaken approach. That pushing the whole codependent model, we've talked about that, so you know fully about that part. Right. But masculine and feminine, because we are embodying both, and because we're all individually 100% people, we're not half mm -hmm. a person, we're a whole person, that masculine and feminine blend or um, combination makes up 100% of who we are. And so individually, independent of gender, we may be a certain percentage into the masculine versus a percentage of the feminine or vice versa. So for like, example, I know I probably hover now around like 70% masculine, 30% feminine but it moves back and forward depending on what's going on. And same for women. So a woman who's in a feminine, she'll have masculine within her, but she tends to be more in her feminine space more of the time. It's a moving, it's a moving reference, a moving scale. Right. Yeah. That helps. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, okay. Now I want to kind of bring this back to the work that you do with how mm -hmm. you help Ideally, your clients are women, right? Why don't you explain it? Who are your clients? Who, who do you work with and how do you help them? What is your, what are you bringing to the table here? Because it's fascinating, in my opinion, what uh, this work that you do. And I would love to, I think, the people that I, who 
watch me and stuff would, would be interested to know more. And then we can bounce some more oh, conversation because that. that's where my questions yeah. go. Bazing. Can you help <laughs> us with that? Okay, then I'll be prepared to be bazinged. <laughs> yeah, let's prepare um, to be bazinged. <laughs> Truth is, um, I've been for, I've been called to support women since my teens. I think I look back and I realize there's a couple of highlights in my youth, my teenage years, both at school and also in my mum, that opened me up to realize how much I wanted to help women. I didn't know how back then, but I knew there was something off inside. I want to help resolve, fix, change that. So fast forward to the work I do now, and really it was inspired by the work I did starting in 2007 that really consciously brought me into the masculine and feminine conversations. And the mm -hmm. teachers I worked with and the programs I took really found, put me back on track because I was off track without realizing it. And I knew that by being in my masculine meant that I had to live whatever my calling was and purpose to really bring me alignment in the world. That was kind of one of the things I got as a visceral experience for myself. And then what I realized also was seeing women in their feminine and seeing women in their feminine in group for the first time back in 07, that was so magnificent. It, it floored me. I literally was on my knees in awe of women when they're in the feminine. I just was so deeply in reverence, but also so passionate about seeing that more of it. Almost like, how do I help women get that more often? Not like. Can you explain what that meant? What does that look like? Uh, yeah. <laughs> A group of women in their feminine. What does that mean? Like I'm seeing us at the club dancing. Like that's. Well, that that's that's but what one did it look like when you saw it? it? Yeah. Well, the first time that happened when I was in a, a, a training with a company called Warrior Sage that I love dearly. They're still going and actually they're rebranding and doing some new stuff, which is amazing. Um, I was in the training called Sex, Passion and Enlightenment, just for the people who want to, who want to track this. And mm -hmm. each day of the three day program, we were doing some work that based on, was based on David Data's work who we also studied with. And so each day we would split up and the men would go in one room, women would go in another room. And men would do masculine practices, women would do feminine practices. So of course I have no idea what they were doing because I was in the room with the men. So we come back together through the weekend and as the weekend went on, I noticed how much polarity there was, how much difference, how much um, distinction there was between the masculine and the feminine. And I knew at the, the last break when we came together, we did some pretty powerful exercises that were very um, animalistic intentionally, but very safe as well. Mm -hmm. I just felt such attraction to, but also reverence for what women were being. And at the end of it, I mean, to put it in a very simplistic terms, because this is more about embodiment than just what they were doing, the women were definitely moving sexually and dancing and, and, and enjoying themselves. But it was the energy they brought with them that really, for me, awoke in me how much masculine heart I had available. Because we've done the work to be in the masculine, but I think in some ways it was the women being in the feminine that encouraged it more to bring it out of me. And uh -huh. it was something that uh -huh. some really, for wow. me, brought me in, put me in the place of reverence, but also respect. Right. That, Did that you find, I mean, how, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm kind of picturing this situation, this scene here where you get these polarities of energy and then you mm -hmm. bring it together in the same room. What happened? <laughs> Was, I mean, <laughs> <clears throat> well, again, we were in, we were in a seminar in a, tr in a, in a structured workshop. So we right. had ground rules <laughs> and we had a framework right. and we had also deep, we had deeply, well, deep, also the thing was, is that there were people in the, in the training um, that were, pro I don't know what the percentage were, but there's several, there were several singles and quite a lot in relationships. So yeah. the ones in relationship had more freedom after the training was over to do what they were doing only deeper because they were connected. The ones who were right. single were kind of like, in a way you could mingle, but you had to keep the ground rules in place. So it was a respectful place. Yeah. Because the temptation was to get so Im immersed in the sexual chemistry that was there, because the truth is, I That's feel that talking. polarity, yeah, because I feel personally that polarity and reconnecting to the masculine feminine polarity in relationship is what re-energizes the chemistry of sexual attraction. Right. So chemistry is not something that just happens when you initially get together and goes away. It comes from the place of really knowing our opposite polarity that, that is um, tunable so we can turn it back on again. Okay, so let's talk about that because I think that that's something you help your Okay. the women you work with do right like they're what is their mm -hmm. frustration what are they experiencing that they would want to come to talk to you about okay so so to go back to your original question you asked me about this because yeah. we jumped around a bit the sort of women i work with are 
mostly women who are um, independent business women or entrepreneurs. Maybe they may be running in a company, but they're very strong and direct in getting things done. But usually in the forties, even in the fifties, so they may have gone through a marriage and divorce, may have had kids, maybe not. But the truth is, they're feeling empty, and also they're starting to feel themselves harden up. They're getting they've gotten toughened by the world. They've gotten um, Basically, they've gotten to a place where they're feeling empty and they're missing out on what they really want. Right. They figured and out how to put the roof over their head, feed themselves, and all of that, but they're missing the nurturing that comes from a partner, that soft... Well, the, the trouble is also that, the, uh, yes, and the men they're generally attracted in the past, or the men they've pursued, gone out with, because a lot of women go out and hunt, when they're in this mindset, which is another piece when of When they're puzzle, in the masculine. Yeah, they're they like, I can, do it, I can do it, I can yes. do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because the world has taught women to get out of the world and succeed by, by going for it and chasing the goal. Because the world's designed for the masculine. And women have had to copy that to succeed. Right. Largely speaking. These are generalities, by the way. Yeah. So the sort of, women, sort of men that women are attracting when they're in the space are either men that are um, beta males, wimps, which I was in past relationships, so I know what it felt like, where, she, where the, she would run the show and I'd be along for the ride and I'd be whatever you want. And it was thinking it was the thing to serve my partner, but it actually was not taking leadership. It was a, a very um, ultimately dysfunctional relationship. So that's one mm -hmm. way. The second way is she'll be with a man who doesn't um, honor what she's doing and will try and push her down because he thinks that she, what she's doing is not valuable enough and like, I'm the one in charge and you should follow me. And the third one, is actually where it becomes competitive. Because it's almost like, she's doing so well, I've got to beat her and be better than her. Not so much knocking her down, as much as saying, I'm a man, I've got to be ahead of the game. So it's this rivalry thing that can be exciting in some ways, but it's missing the mark largely in other ways too. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling experiencing some of this. So what does somebody do? <laughs> what does somebody do? <laughs> um, and, and I know well, I brought up some- Then come see me. <laughs> Awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> the the truth is, like? for what, again, well, because most women have, again, have, the women, especially in the business world, have been trained and raised to act like the men, thanks to the sexual revolution of the 70s, 60s rather, that they would copy the men to do things in the world. I mean, I remember being in England in my, in my childhood. I still remember on black, um, black and white TV back then, watching Twiggy, who was the most famous model in England, who was flat-chested, broad-shouldered, um, like Donald Briss's suits on with mm -hmm. short hair and almost flat makeup. And right, that's what women right, learned right. to do. They, so they burned their bras. They went to work and acted like men to compete. And unfortunately, yeah. even now, what, 50 years later, women are still forgetting how to get off that wagon and say, hang on a second, that's not what I want to be. You know, right. female entrepreneurship is shifting. There are some women I know who are leading the arena of helping women own their, their femininity in their business work. Mm -hmm. But it's rare mm -hmm. still. And it's not very common because the structure mm -hmm. of the society it's not been built for that yet. And so for me, for most women, just to want to change the way they do things, is there's two muscles they need to work on, I would say. One is attraction, two is receptivity. Because for most yeah. women, okay. they've been trained to be go get, go get, go get, which is what the male mindset is. And they're lost touch with how to learn how to pull in what they want and to receive what they really want as a gift. And the feminine in women is yearning for that receptivity because the other part is, Okay, this one too. A lot of women have um, suffered from being, I say this, receiving what they didn't want from men, from from siblings, from parents, wherever it was. And so women mm -hmm. have had to, have almost shut down that part of themselves for safety, as so they have to learn mm -hmm. how to trust it again. Right, right, right. Yeah. So you said there's two things: the attraction and the receptivity. What, where does that, what is the attraction piece of it? The, the, one of the biggest gifts the feminine has that most women forget is the power to attract what they want. Attraction is a feminine energy. The masculine is the one that goes out and gets it, pursues, chases, gets it done. The feminine energy draws it in, yeah. bites it in, is, is, is powerful. In fact, it's almost like the power of the sun to pull in what she wants. That's the power of the feminine. Yeah. So attraction really is naturally a feminine skill. Now, again, thankfully, men and women have both skills. Both, mm -hmm. both polarities, so we can, the men can train more in that, but women naturally have that in their feminine. The receptivity is to be sensitive to the world. 
a lot of women, as I mentioned, have been hardened by the world to be successful, to drive, to get it done. And so their, their intuition, their sensitivity to be able to pick up what's happening in the world is missing. Or mm -hmm. I should say it's been shut down. So mm -hmm. when we talk about receptivity, it's like having radar or um, like intuition, basically. But it's more than that. It's that, that sensitivity to receive messages from, from the world and guidance and insight so they can move forward in the world in a successful way. Because the thing is, when I work with my clients, it is about relationship starting point. And 9% of the time, it's about heartbreak recovery, like healing the wounds from the past. But the mm -hmm. side effect of that is women start to learn how to tune their sensitivity to receive their insights and guidance in the world beyond relationship so they can actually thrive as feminine women in the world. Nice, nice. So, okay, I have a couple of questions based on that. Of um, one of them is <laughs> how does somebody increase their attractive powers? What are there, like, <laughs> I know there's no formulas, but like what, for example, for the masculine energy is attractive? Hold that thought for a second because I just saw another question come up. So I want to get to that one first. Before oh, okay. Back to that. So, oh, because um, I can't see questions said, from yours. Okay. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So the question is, do you think women in Europe are as hard as we have become here in the U.S.? Um, I would say not as much, but definitely close because the thing is, America leads the way. <laughs> not in a good way. But the reality is I think mm -hmm. that American society, because it's a new society, has a different mod modality because I think European society being more traditional in some ways has not fallen in the same trap as the, as the Western society in, the, in, in America has, but it's still not perfect. So definitely both places mm -hmm. have room to grow. So mm -hmm. to answer that question. So, sorry, back, back to you, Gina. Your question was about the, um... oh. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I do love that question too, because I agree with the, you know, there's still a lot of tradition in a lot of parts of the rest of the world that we do not, um, we've abandoned and with that tradition right. means roles and all that um so yeah my question was how does somebody become amplify or build up their attractive skills the, the first thing for most or of the women whatever. in this situation power because they've yeah. been so, right because some women have been so much in their match or the masculine get things done make things happen they've neglected their ability to attract. And what's happening mm -hmm. is there's two things happening. One of them is that they've been suppressing their attraction, thinking they're going to go get it instead and make it happen. So they're actually overriding their attraction because they're driven to achieve it rather than let it come in. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. The second part mm -hmm. is that a lot of women, because they're, um, this is a whole other conversation piece about the history, is that most women have attracted things they didn't want, usually because their mm -hmm. subconscious is doing the attracting. And the biggest challenge for, for everybody, men and women, is to bring their attraction skills conscious. Because when we're attracting, un attracting unconsciously, we're drawing in stuff wondering, why is that happening to me? And we're judging and blaming the world for these painful situations when we brought it in because our subconscious, which doesn't know any better, is attracting what's happening without us knowing consciously what's going on. Which is, that's a whole other psychological piece, by the way. Okay. Um... Okay, I'm trying to process what that what you just said. So we're attracting what we don't want. Does that mean we're we're just settling, or we're attracting below? What does that mean Basically, exactly? Well, so let me let me bring in some of the some people started with. Bruce Lipton has a book called The Biology of Belief, and I've watched him talk a few times in a lot of his talks. And he basically has distilled this down. And I I've talked this for a long time without realizing this is what he talks about. Is yeah. that basically when we're born, we come in without any agenda. We don't come in, we come in with a clean slate, no idea what's happening, and we take on the world around us like a sponge. And from mm -hmm. basically from a zero to about seven years old, we are students of life without any right. um, curriculum and without any agenda. So everything right. happens around us, we take it in and go, oh, that's the way life is. Mm -hmm. So we tend to take on what the rules are about the world based on what our siblings, parents, kindergarten peers do and everything like that. And by the time we're seven or eight years old, we have, a, we have a rule book that's been installed without us even knowing what it is because mm -hmm. we learned without knowing it. It's almost like it's gone in without any filter, without any conscious de de um, volition and conscious choice. So mm -hmm. fast forward to when we're 25, 30, 45, 50, whatever that is, we're making decisions with a very powerful subconscious program called our six-year-old running the show behind the scenes. So if we right. believe that... Um, for example, the thing I grew up with, I grew up being bullied at high school. 
and I didn't believe I was worthy. So I had a lot of wiring that to unwire or rewire that mm -hmm. I actually deserved to have what I wanted because my programming was I didn't. And so a lot right. of times through life, even though sometimes good things happened, I would sabotage them or I would deny them or just simply not value them because I thought I didn't deserve them. So right. I had to rewire that so I could actually start being accepting and appreciative of what was happening because I was now becoming conscious of my choices. So we all mm -hmm. carry that in different ways, shapes, or forms. Right, right, okay. And especially for women, especially for minorities. Right, okay, yeah, because my experience for my own self was I absolutely did not feel attractive. I felt um, that I was absolutely not worthy and completely the opposite of attractive to men. Um, mm -hmm. And therefore I chose accordingly. <laughs> I chose abusive, I chose cheaters, I chose completely very, very disempowering yeah. relationships forever until recently. Which is, the, you know, the one you are aware of that I've talked about is still, it's an improvement for sure, but it still is not right where I'd like it. Right. And, that's, and this and is the so indicator as well. It's all so about we work. Can... Well, it, it's partly, yes, it is. And one of the good things is, is, is that, like when you look back at your past relationships all the way back, you start, I hopefully see there's an upward progress of them at least. A million so percent. So as much as you may yes. be going, it's not what I want, yes. at least you're going, I'm getting better. <laughs> so there's like, totally. at least that consolation along the way. Absolutely. I believe that a million percent. In fact, that's why I keep, you know, going, this person, this relationship is absolute evidence that I have come very, very close to my ideal, not quite there. And, um, mm -hmm. but it's evidence that my worthiness levels are going up. Um, yeah. And so, you know, I'm probably in a position that a lot of women out there are in a really like ambiguous state. I think I hear this a lot where they're with people who are kind and nice and have a lot of going for it, but they're ambiguous. And I never in a million years thought I would be in a relationship with somebody who won't commit. <laughs> I'm like, how <laughs> cliche can I possibly be? And so I'm like, then we have that constant. So we've experienced this seven months of this, which I, I, I struggle right. to call anything short of <laughs> crazy making, Toxic, un, what's the word? Um, Unfulfilling? D, 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 you go to Al Anon for it. Codependent. Codependent. <laughs> Codependent relationship. Codependent. Yes. Right. And, yeah. you know, as I was telling a client <laughs> last night or somebody, I was talking to somebody last night, I'm like, just watch. You know, haven't talked to him for this amount of days. And then he texted me and I'm like, had that punch in the stomach, like, wait a minute. And then we had that exchange and then I'm like, nope, I'm not, I'm not available for any more conversation. Now watch, it'll right. be like clockwork when I know he will come back around and it will be yeah. once again, my opportunity to show up for myself and say, nope, I'm not available. This is the conversation I'm available for. Nothing else, period. <laughs> so to, step up or step can out. You change, can you change a codependent behavior relationship? Um, in the other person, not easily. In yourself, yes. Simply well, put. yeah, no, no, no. Right. I mean, can if one person changes, can that relationship change? Or is it like, well, no, that... I don't know. Um, the truth you know of the this work is that if you're in a relationship with somebody else mm -hmm. and you are... You can say this. If you're in a relationship with somebody else and you go through a change of consciousness, do some development work, transform beliefs, change from programming, it's possible that they will show up to match that, but it's mm -hmm. usually rare because what's happening is you've left them behind. And, it's, mm -hmm. and not good or bad, you just move beyond them because the patterns you had that interface with them aren't in you anymore. So the connection is not there anymore. So you're basically missing, or should say, you're not wired to be with that person unless they change. And so but there's not the vibrational the work, match. You may, right? In in well, my it's, language, it's it would be vibrational. It's behavioral. Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
but it's, but it's even behavioral and belief structure wise because your beliefs mm -hmm. are changing. The codependent model that we come from, we all, most of us come from, when we start to learn about autonomy and interdependence and evolution and evolutionary of conscious relationship, codependence just doesn't work anymore. We drop right. that paradigm because we know how limiting it is because we now see from the other side, oh, that's not what I want. And who I am now, it doesn't fit that anymore. We've outgrown it in a way. Right, right. But as you and I talked about recently, how we know this, however, we still <laughs> will practice it. You know, we're practicing, yes. we're learning, we're growing, we're evolving. Right. And even though we know this and we can speak about it, we are still stepping into it and, and still practicing old be behaviors. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. See, this is the part about that six-year-old. Yeah. Is that even though our adult self knows this is the way it should be and I want this and this and this, the six-year-old's going, but I know this habit. This is the way it works for me. I'm going to keep doing this pattern because right, it doesn't right, know right. any better. And it's basically mm -hmm. what you imagine is, is that you're sitting in the passenger seat telling your six-year-old to drive the car to New York and it's driving off the cliff. <laughs> yeah, that visual. I love that. <laughs> I'm thinking of Tootsis, the driving That's cat. what we do in life. Saturday Night Live, you know, Tootsis. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that is the best analogy ever and I'm totally stealing it, FYI. <laughs> Go for it. That's so you, good. You, you can still quote me. <laughs> I will. I will. I will. But that's what's you. happening Absolutely. because what we. Thank you, but the see the thing is, it's like you know, I didn't know. I mean, just use my life as an example, and I, I had what some would look at as a perfect upbringing. You know, my parents were together sixty years, and so my mom passed away in twenty twelve. They were so connected, and as a kid, I don't remember my parents ever arguing. I mean, it was mm -hmm. like it was a great household. Yeah, we had our issues outside of the house, but in the house we were really good. Nice. My dating life in my teens and into my early 20s was very, very clearly defined. I'd meet a girl, we'd have a great time connecting, we'd, have, we'd go out for a, few, for a while, and then we'd have an argument and I would leave. Every single time. Because I didn't realize until later that my wiring was that in loving relationships, there are no arguments, because my parents showed me that. So when I was with somebody who argued, there must be no love, I don't need to be here, and I left. Every single time. Wow. And I have some very people, opposite. <laughs> Right, because I mean, most people don't come from a necessarily peaceful background. <laughs> they come from a background where the relationship history, especially if they're more like Italian or Latin. Italian. <laughs> there's a lot more, of, more right, there's a lot more emotional expression, a lot more passion. Right. So when you meet somebody who's not doing that, there's no attraction. And, when, and so if the person who you're with, like for example, and this is a, it's an extreme case, if, you, if somebody, not you, if somebody came from a, a background where as a kid, they were abused by their parents or by their siblings, somebody else. They will not feel loved until the person they're with abuses them, literally. Right. It's that kinesthetic huh? in people. Because the wiring mm -hmm. is such that we associate love with our upbringing. And so the relationships that we have as a kid, in terms of our parental relationship, model for us. Again, the six-year-old doesn't know any different. That's how it's going right. to be. So as an adult, we're saying, I want a really conscious relationship. We're going to be everything's going to be perfect. And you end up in the same relationship again, where you're getting abused or neglected or deserted or whatever it is pretty much guarantee that you look back at your six year old and see that's where it came from because the right. wiring's in there. And so you talk about and you help people, which is what I do too, rewire, reprogram yeah. and create new belief systems, right. new stories, new rules and new paradigms. Yes. Right. Partly for me, uh, I, call it, I, call it, I call it past integration and, and reparenting because in a lot of ways what you're mm -hmm. doing is you're becoming a new adult to your younger self to make mm -hmm. it safe so that that younger self can grow up. Right. So reparenting. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if somebody like me came to you as a client and said, okay, I got this situation and you happen to know some of my situation, what would you say? And I, I kind of briefly said, you know, non-committal, whatever. And for whatever reasons, all the excuses are there and we go about doing our little codependent dance. And then I decide I'm getting off of the dance floor. I've got to get off the dance floor. I can no longer do this. Right. And I show up and I ask you, okay, what am I doing? What am I going to do? Because I have this vision of my relationship, what it looks like, and, and it's pretty clear. And it's totally happening. In right. A million percent, it's happening. Mm -hmm. I need your help. Oh, thanks, Danny. I see you. <laughs> I don't know if you see, <laughs> uh, do you see Danny Blackburn? I see Danny, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cause I, can, I guess some I people I see, some people, you see some people, we both see. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Danny. I don't know. <laughs> So first, <laughs> so first of all, um, 
looking and you at can the share what bits you know about happening. that are relevant, huh? Right. Well, first of all, it's like in, in what you're saying is that you're coming to me with your experience of what you're not wanting. So first of all, that's clear to me that something's happening you don't want. So first of all, we go, okay, so what part of you does want it because it's still making it happen. That's one of the biggest pieces. And the second thing is your vision of what you really want isn't strong enough. Based upon the fact you've got a vision and you've got reality and the reality is winning out, but what you want is the vision, it's yeah. clear where the priority is. So shifting that is what it comes down to in a simplistic way. I mean, a lot more than that. So, Love it. Yes. Hi, Danny. <laughs> And so, so that, does that help? exactly. And I, I mean, yes. the way I would deal with it is do what I'm doing and continue to, to focus on the vision and, and de-emphasize, even though I'm not, because I've talked about it, but <laughs> de-emphasize <laughs> what's going on. I noticed. Or at least, <laughs> right? Get off of right. the dance floor at least. Okay. At least physically like, okay, I'm, I'm out of it in the practical well, the, the, sense. The, the question, the thing also is, and what's coming up for me is saying, it's like, You've given him ultimatums. You haven't said end of the line. I haven't what? And you've given him ultimatums, like it has to be this or not. You haven't said no. You haven't said over. You haven't said complete. And so you, 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 it's like you haven't closed the door yet because you're still like going, just maybe, just maybe. And so you have this little crack in the door so you can sneak back in if he even bothers. Yes. But you're hoping he might. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> totally. You are right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then I have to say, you would tell me, close the door. I would say, Block if you really know what you want and that's not it, close the door. Uh -huh. Like, cut it off complete. And wish him well. And, have, and, and the key thing is, though, is that that yearning inside, that passion inside, that wish for him to be the one, is turn that back on the vision you really have like redirect the energy right. because the truth is he may show up in that place down the road, but you can't wait for him to right. do it because he might be dead by the time he gets there. Right. <laughs> okay, so the message is I'm kind of realist in a sense. No, no. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, uh, okay. And do I have to actually do that? Like say, okay, this is my last message. Don't ever contact me again. I'm blocking you from my phone. <laughs> That seems mean. I That's didn't say hard. I hate. I, mean, I hate the idea of texting to end a relationship. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to use those no. words. The hardest part is we're friends too. Well, that's the thing. Then you need to qualify what that is. Right. Yeah. Look, I'm watching you when you're yeah. responding. <laughs> oh, this is the thing. Me, is that? Is that? Right. It's moving you're, me out of my comfort attack. zone. You still want. Totally mm -hmm. attached. Hey, you asked for this. <laughs> I did. Yeah. I wanted this is real the, time but... shizzle, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is life counseling, <laughs> coaching. And I love Because it. the thing I that love... comes back to is what do you really, what is the thing is about what you really want. And this is the thing, one of the biggest challenges that we have as human beings is that we know what we really want, but when it's so close, but it's not that, we might settle for it. Because you don't mm. one Yeah. And this is my one as well is knowing I'm worthy and deserving of what I really do want. So if I get like second place with something that's almost as good, but not quite, and it's going to annoy the hell out of me for the rest of my life, but I'll do it because I think I'm only deserving of that, then I'll stay there. Even though yeah. the vision is out there waiting for me, I just simply declare it and own it. But I have, it's like, yeah. there's a seminar I took a long time ago, talks about how it's so challenging. And this is actually, um, rather than use that, let me use Bruce Lee as an analogy. He had to talk about how it's very, very hard to, to, he used the analogy of using a cup with water in it for the way that our brain works. So basically, you have to empty it out to fill it up again with something new. Um, and it's like we can't have a relationship whilst we're still holding on to the old one because the hands are occupied. Right. We've got to be willing to mm -hmm. let go so we can be free to actually welcome in the right <laughs> one. Yeah, uh, you got that. <laughs> you feel the pain in my face. Oh, my God. Well, I'm hoping and, I'm feeling the joy in your heart going, finally. No. No, I'm attached no? still. And And... This is right. the work. This is the work of moving out of your comfort zone. And what I tell people all That's the time. That's why when I work with my clients. Comfort zone. Yeah. Huh? Right. Well, so that's why when I work with my clients, it's usually a three to six month commitment because it's deep work. You know, one phone yeah. call, mm -hmm. I can work miracles, but that would be pushing the luck. <laughs> yeah. 
No, I agree with you. I think that it is, it's, it's relationship building, it's building the trust and using the scaffolding. Like, I, I know this, I know this, I know this, let me pull you up here. Um, right. And trusting the process. Which, which step is safe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I didn't realize that this call was going to turn into this, and I know you didn't either, but this is gold. <laughs> this is gold. You're welcome. Because uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's, but what, but you, you nailed it down to this very important point. My desire for this, this is not yet as strong as my comfort in this dynamic. And the six-year-old said, no, this is what we do. This right. is what we do. Like, this is, I don't know if this is possible because that's out there in the etheric realm. That's in spirit right. energy. <laughs> this is the, the bird in the bush or the bird in the hand. These are the birds in the bush or whatever. And right. so you can be comfortable or you can be alive in a way. Yeah. And the reason, okay. the re and one reason I love this so much is because when I see people really own, when I see women especially own their magnificence and not settle for that abusive, painful relationship I've seen them in before, and not you, but there's one other, other clients. And I have a couple of clients I work with were actually out of narcissistic relationships, and I saw the pain of that. And I was so mm -hmm. grateful to see them choose higher level after that, that I just felt like my work is almost like I'm, I'm done. Like having done that, I've served my purpose because for me, seeing women stand right. up and own what they deserve rather than playing that game of just settling for what they're being given. Mm -hmm. Because ladies, yeah. let me make this clear. You have the power to attract. You do not have the right to put up with what you're given. Because that's mm -hmm. a mistake many women do, unfortunately make. Yeah, right. And that's so, it's so powerful to change that. And mm -hmm as we've all also discussed in previous calls is about the, you know, the spiraling up and doing it at a different level and, you know, elevating. But I, I see, but I mean, what's happening right now in this conversation, I'm seeing like what you're suggesting for me, <laughs> for me seems like, yes, <laughs> oh, but it seems like a totally next level decision for me to make that I can't not make. The thing I is, can't not. Just, just so, we, so, so everybody watching is clear, we have we have no agreements going into this. There's no rules here. So there's nothing you have to do at the end of this. <laughs> uh -huh. Right. Um, and I don't know if anybody can really understand what I'm going through right now. <laughs> but probably if there's women on here who well, are hopefully watching. Hopefully people are watching getting their own lessons out of this. I would hope so. <laughs> That, that you can relate to having an experience with somebody who's amazing. I mean, that's the thing. This is the first person I've ever, you know, had a re any type of relationship with that I, yeah. I, I, I love, totally love. On, and, and I will, I can say, if me releasing him and doing this makes him happier, I'm good with that. Sort of. <laughs> right. <There's> that, but, <laughs> I was waiting for that. I know. I will be, <laughs> but no, but the, what I'm saying is it it's, there's no, like, I can't look at this guy and go, yeah, he's kind of creepy. He's kind of a jerk. He's, I mean, he's none of those things. He's a really awesome guy. Um, and, and, that's the thing, and you I want to make up see... stuff about it. No. What do you mean? Well, cause it's like, you make somebody say, you, you know, you, you want to make up stuff about him to try and make it downplay him so you can get rid of him sort of thing. Right. It's like, no, yeah. you can acknowledge where he is because the thing about it is, well, because the thing is also acknowledging who he is and what, what quality of relationship you could have with him is so much more above what you were in before. That you're saying that means I'm at that level or higher. Yeah. So the use is for your own right. benefit, your own growth. Is by saying that, you look at it and go, you know what, the reality is that if the relationship is so good, I, can, I know I'm at that level because I wouldn't attract it otherwise. So now I can move on right. to the level I really yeah. want to be at. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and... Um... That's what I want. Yeah. And I know what I need to do. <laughs> and you know, I'm here to support you. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. 
because this brings me to my next conversation. I think you may have discussed this before, and I don't know what, uh, how much time we have, but but I know this is a hot topic for people everywhere. Ghosting. Like my options are to completely ghost him oh. and never respond to him because I don't have. I don't want to be the one to use those words, have them come out of my mouth, and and feel it at that. I don't want to. And and to, and to op keep the door open for him, that he'll know. Well, those are just reasons she's giving, and I can work around that. Right. So you haven't you haven't told him or shown him a clear paradigm where you can say we're done and still maintain the friendship. I'm not in a position where I want to maintain the friendship yet. Not okay. now. I know I can. I could get there, um, and and that's fine. But I I'm not there right now. Because so, we will always have this gray area and this confusion as we're trying to be yeah. friends. I've done that before. I, I know what it's like to try and be friends with somebody who's not available. And I've been on both sides of that. And it's torture for one or the other person. And, and frankly, yeah. he doesn't want to be friends. Oh, come on. <laughs> right. So knowing that, then yeah. it's clear based on what you said and what we know one of history wise too is that the the things that you want the things you provide don't match right that we know not all of yeah. them enough of them don't you won't be able to make it work because that's the other thing too is that yeah. you know the people talk right. about how you should have like a real list of what you want of like these 70,000 things or to make it 10 it's like the primary things you want yes a lot of those fit but some of the fundamental ones don't right and you, yeah so his work, line in the sand and my line in the sand there's there's a gap between our lines in the sand right so your choice sure. point is really, what do you want to do with that? Do you want to, if, yeah. you want to, if you want to maintain the same thing forever and ever, I know you won't want that. <laughs> as, as nice as it can be every so often, it's not enough. Yeah, right. So the choice point is, if you, and, and the, the thing about it is, it's like you say, well, I hold on to this to get what I want. If you're holding on to it, there's no hands free to get what you want. So it's, you've got to be willing to say, okay, I need to make this complete. So ghosting, no, not recommended. <laughs> Let's get back to that point. <laughs> Um, a phone call, definitely. I would be willing, uh, a choice, you got, you got a choice. You can write a physical letter, not an email, but a physical letter, or you can call him. Because both of those can have effective communication. A text, no, doesn't work, because there's not enough communication, and ghosting, not even less communication. So definitely something where you communicate what's going on, because you may have said it before, but you need to say it in a form that he gets in. That's why a written letter can be good too, because he'll see in black and white, or blue and white, whatever you're writing with, what you really want and what he's not matching to. Right. So, mm -hmm. okay. So Danny just asked a question. If you're not in a committed relationship, what about dating other people? Well, if you're not in a committed relationship, but it's still a partially committed relationship, it's in the way of you dating other people. Energetically, it's messing with you. So I'd be free and clear to date only or be in a relationship only, but not both. Mm -hmm. It gets messy. Right. Yeah. My, I that's agree. my perspective, you know. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I understand what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that that clears up any energy. Questions? For sure. Huh? Yeah. Well, yes. I know. Does anybody else have any questions? It does clean up energy. Absolutely. Take the pressure off. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, I'm kind of hoping energy, that maybe, yes. uh, and this is, and this is, I'm saying this half jokingly because I wouldn't recommend this, but I, I think it's fun to bring up. Like I've been kind of thinking, well, yeah, that's fine. I'll just find somebody else and then it will be easy to let it go. I mean, yeah, I have my you, opinions and about you, that and that's. <laughs> mm -hmm. As I said, you know, it's like, you, it's, it's hard to grab something new when you're holding on to what's already there. And you right. know, it's, it's yeah. like making space, you know, I, in, in my, um, in my program, I track the man you want a couple of things in there is about clearing the space, making space available for a relationship internally and externally. So, you know, it's hard yeah. to make room for a relationship when his toothbrush is in your bathroom, you know, that sort of thing can be really messy. Yeah. Right. So, you know, so was that Karen? I want to know it's important not to settle. I also know people who cling to delusional expectations, kind of a fine line sometimes. Um, I'm not sure if I would agree with that because if it's if it's delusional, they need help anyway. But if they're if they're clinging, if they're holding a vision of what they really want that is valid, because the thing is about having valid expectations, 
then yes, yeah, sometimes it can be beyond what looks logical or even reasonable, and they can have it. But if they're delusional, they need some serious, some serious help. So I don't know if it's a fine line so much. It's, I mean, it's black and white. I would like to know more about what Karen thinks is delusional because that's I that's my area is delusional. I don't, you know, reality is not my play sandbox because like we all keep affirming reality and oh isn't it terrible and and I can't possibly build a business through you know whatever or I can't possibly have this relationship or so what is I would like to know what does she mean about delusional does she mean within a current relationship that is somebody is settling in well the thing Good question Dan. Um, if it's not meant to be it's not to be would it wouldn't it be natural fall away um, not necessarily, Danny, Danny, because some people get really stuck in there and they're holding on for like they're holding on for dear life because they don't think they can have anything better than that. And they're worried. So naturally fall away. Right. Because when we of... talk about. I think when we talk about meant to be, we're talking about what is our soul really asking for mm -hmm. meant to be is surrendering to spirit and faith and saying, give me what I am really, really asking for, because when I think of meant to be. I think of what is truest, most pure expression of what my soul and your soul and somebody else's soul, everybody's soul desire is. How can we be the highest version of ourselves? And right. when you surrender to faith and say, do what, I, what you're suggesting I do and say, cut this off completely with mature adult conversation, hey, you know what, my land, your land is not going to work. And then you know, go through whatever emotional drama I will have for a day or so. Oh, wow, that's hard. Oh, my God. Um, and then clear out the space. Then I'm allowing for what, quote unquote, is meant to be. Surrendering to faith and spirit. And right. what do you think? So my, my issue with this is that um, you, you're a woman in a, man, in a man's body. Pretty sure some. Tamara, I'm not sure. I, I think you're a woman from what I've seen you. Um, so let me answer your question. So the challenge is we, if we, we really hold to a place that, okay, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> so this conversation may not fit for you necessarily, Tamara, so keep, keep watching. We'll get to, get to that perhaps. In answer to your question about if we are in a place where we're going to give it up to um, what's meant to be, I don't think any, I don't think many people on the planet are willing to trust that much that what's meant to be will show up because they want to have some vision, intention, some control of what it's going to be. Because there are plenty of people out there who go, oh, I don't want to be with them. But what if that's what's meant to be? So you've got to be careful with what you're visioning, what you're intending. I believe that we as humans, because the thing is, if we talk about the spiritual realm sort of thing, like we're all spiritual beings having human experience. So everyone on the planet is a spiritual being from the same source, if you believe in this principle that I personally believe in which means that we can love everybody else on the planet like ourselves because they're all the same thing. The only difference is the packaging we come in. So then it becomes preference. And so the preference is, do, what sort of packaging do you want in terms of their beliefs, their goals, their physical presence, where they live, all this sort of stuff. And so that packaging is really what we're focusing on when you're looking for a relationship. And so if you are saying, you know, holding up for the best thing, Sorry. So, so I hope that makes sense. I'm just realizing I'm going to cut it off so I can answer uh, Karen's question, Karen's statement. So for me personally about having that clarity is you want to know what you really want. And if you're thinking about things that are totally outside the realm of possibility, then get reasonable, but also get rational that you can have it. Because real life isn't necessarily down in the pits. It's just what is. We can choose to look at down the pits. So we're looking at what's in the heights. Real life has both in it. It's up to us to choose it and work with it. But I wanted to get so... Karen said, so by delusional, I mostly meant people who say they want true love, but then drown it out with an, ex an oppressive checklist of what this looks like, especially material. I can talk about right. that. Right. Uh, well, did, we I did talk about that, that. We haven't talked about it. No, so, I'd like to talk. I'd like to answer about that or respond because what I think, please. what I believe, <laughs> when you say true love, the only true love is what you have with yourself. And if you truly do love yourself and have that show up with that complete self love to the extent we can as human beings in our physical experience, you will attract something that is as close to true love as you can get. 
And when you're talking about the checklist and all of that, I think that the checklist is a fun exercise, but if you truly give up to spirit, you know, bring me my soulmate or whatever those that looks like to you, that right partner, I think the checklist has very little to do with anything. It's just a fun distraction to say, oh, I want him to drive this car and have live here and da da da. da. In my world, in my experience of life, none of that matters. The heart is what drives you toward whoever it is, and they don't look like the package. They're not delivered in the package that you think you want. And that's why when I'm coaching anybody, it's about how do you want to feel? Yes. What does this relationship feel like? My relationship vision has very little to do, has nothing to do with anything except for we have a, we have created a safe, happy, fun home that is safe for our children, that they know what love looks like uh, because both of the man I'm coming to be with, I, I'm assuming he has children and they've been through some type of emotional turmoil in their lives and they want to know, I want to demonstrate what true love looks like, what, what a healthy loving relationship looks like that's in a safe home where you can be fully yourself. So there is no, there is no checklist there. That's where my heart is right. showing me. And that's why I'm kind of stuck on this guy, which I know I gotta let go because I see he and I with, I feel that between us, but it's just not there right now. Does that make sense? And yeah, absolutely. People are constantly talking, oh, I need this and this and this and this and this. All of the, the passion, the attraction, the love, the excitement, the adventure comes from here. And it comes in all kinds of material packages that you don't, you can't script out. People try, but that's my opinion. That's how I feel about it. What do you want to say? Well, I would, I was going to add a couple of things to that because I agree with you to a large extent because when we are attached to the, like, I know some people have vision boards about this clarity, about this, all these things, this, this man is going to be like, all these different things, all these wonderful stuff, these great traits. What it didn't say in there was if he was going to be single. Or so she found this man she was in love with, he's already married. That didn't work. Yeah. So having clarity, yeah, yeah, having yeah. some key things in place. So you want to mm -hmm. have somebody who obviously is single and available as well. But it's also mm -hmm. about the quality, absolutely, because there are so many, I mean, I live in LA, um, and I'm starting to get tired of this town, to be honest. It's so about appearance in so many ways for most of the people, for many people living here. And so if you don't drive the right car or live in the right neighborhood, you, I mean, it's ridiculous how you can be geographically undesirable because you live like three miles the wrong direction. It's, it's crazy making. So quality is definitely more over quantity and over, over um, packaging because you never know what it's going to be like. And it is challenging when you start making it so... Um, refined a list that's so many different points and pieces and, and, and components by the time you get done there's no way the person can fit that mm -hmm. because there's too much definition right. that in fact you're not allowing you're not even allowing spirit having a free hand to make it happen right right and i have a so lot of um, qualities. i have a lot of yeah. friends who are you know swiping left and right and they're like hey he doesn't have kids he doesn't have an education he doesn't do this and blah, 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 blah. so they're blah, blah. And like oh okay well that makes it easy there's nobody <laughs> get a cat <laughs> It's true enough, yeah. I mean, swiping apps, that's the challenge because it is a, and I've talked about this before on Facebook Live myself a few times about this, that the dating yeah. apps are really such a narrow lens to look through. And it's like, why don't you start with what you really want that fills your heart, independent of any apps or sites or anything else? Because once you know what you want, again, because the feminine can attract, then you can go on a smartphone app or you can go to a dating site or you can go out on a, on a uh, speed dating environment and you'll feel the resonance with the person who fits what you're asking for. You can yeah. feel it. That's the feminine power is that relationship energy that can be magnetic and pulls in what resonates with it. So if you know yeah. what you really want and you really line up with the energy, you can become attractive to that. Yeah. And that, you know, that brings up a really good point because since my divorce um, and subsequent rebound relationship, uh, which I had right after the divorce, um, I went on a kind of a bit of a, a dating thing. You're like, I, from the ego, complete, I dated 
people for, oh, I need somebody to make me feel like I have somebody to hang out with during the holidays and wrap presents for my kids and I because I wanted to feel that. And then it was, I want somebody right. to show up at certain events with so I didn't look like a loser. And then I wanted somebody to do this with and that with. And, and I was dating out of these needs, right, to mm -hmm. fulfill these temporary needs. But I was going through a lot at, the, you know, I was going through this big growth process, I guess. And then I stopped yeah. dating, completely stopped dating. Because I'm like, oh, I just need to date me, fall in love with me and do all that and blah, blah, blah which I did, had a great time, focused on my kids and building a business and then becoming this amazingly happy person and then attracted Mr. Wonderful, who's, you know, and I'm like, wow, look at that, this is amazing, um, who I had known for such a long time and all that. But I'm, when you say dating from this, like, what do I want kind of perspective, what I'm looking back on is going, I wanted all these different things through this short period of time, you know, a few years. How does that work? You know, and is it, it goes back to not wanting anything from outside of us being completely fulfilled here. Right. And how do you, can you build and attract a long-term relationship based on that? It's, it's such an, I, it's I such a it. loop and a conundrum, you know, this whole interdependence, independence, codependent, like, I think relationships mm -hmm. have all of that potential. They do. <laughs> but the thing, but again, and, and I didn't mention this before, but again, when I was studying Warrior Sage, there was an elevation of this going from codependence to independence to interdependence as part of the cycle of what we grow through. And yeah. The reality is that codependence is a place you come from where you think you lack something in other person to fill you up. That's the 50 50 relationship model. Independence yeah. is, I don't need you, but I'll play. And the interdependence is there are things you bring to the relationship I don't have, things I bring to the relationship we don't have, but I'm whole anyway, I'm going to play together. And it's a much more elevated way of being in a relationship because yeah. it's more holistic. It's more integrated. And it's also much more respectful. I love so, how you broke that down for me. I, that makes perfect sense. Well, yeah. and, and just, you know, I, I borrowed that from Warrior Sage, so it's not mine, but I use it. <laughs> it's really good. Because I, I was, as you know, really confused. What, what is all this? And mm -hmm. okay. So that, that helps. And Karen says, deciding to stop dating is the best decision she's made in a long time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of is. people choose to date out of pain and want to be mm -hmm. out of pain or out of loneliness and want to be less alone. And neither yeah. one is a healthy way to approach a relationship. If a right. relationship is not adding to your life, you shouldn't be doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Agreed. So, well, this was really awesome. I'm still not ready Likewise. to do what I'm not ready to do what you suggest I need to do. I'm just not ready, but I will. I will know the moment I am, though. That's the thing. At this point, and we I'm are in touch, so you go. Huh? So we are in touch, so you know who to right. find me. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Obviously, this conversation is not ending. <laughs> um, no, but, but it was you. great to do this. And it and it also wasn't planned to be a process for you in this. More about talking about asking the feminine polarity, and then we went way into another conversation, which is fine. <laughs> but it's still the same conversation, kind of, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it still it includes that. Yes. Well, the other the other thing I wanted maybe for another time is I think that it doesn't have to be. I think that, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. And we've talked about Pat Allen and her work, Dr. Pat Allen. She says yeah. that you, the woman can be the masculine in the relationship and the man can be the feminine in the relationship. If both decide and make that decision, that's, you know, so she's doing this and he's doing that. And she says, you know, basically you decide ahead of time. I want to be respected versus cherished in this relationship. Like I'm thinking of some that I know of and I think, I think that that's what's happening. Um, and I don't know, we don't really have to go into it now, but, um, well, don't leave people hanging too much. <laughs> hmm? So I gonna say this, as I mentioned in past relationships, I was in the place where I was the beta male against the women who were in the, they were in the masculine. I was in the acting more of my feminine. Mm -hmm. I was doing all the spiritual work I was doing. It was more in the receptive energy. And I was dating women who were very much in charge running the show. And it's very good chemistry because it doesn't matter which way the polarity is. Again, masculine right. and polarity creates chemical attraction. It doesn't matter yeah. which side the gender it belongs to. That's why it works for gay relationships too. 
So it doesn't right. matter if it's, if it's men and women or men and men, women and women. In the polarity of male-female relationship, the polarities are generally speaking, masculine lines up more with the male, feminine more lines up with the one with the female. And it does reverse naturally in some people. Um, and the relationships do work that way. When I was in those relationships in the past, Initially, they worked great, but after a while, there was an unsettlement because I knew I was out of alignment and she knew she was out of alignment. So we knew that we were yeah. in place. But if it's yeah, naturally right. like, no, that's naturally where you reside, then it works fine. But it's a, it's a rarity, usually speaking. Okay. All right. Good. So Good cool. to know. Well, this has been really fun. Yeah, likewise. We do this again. <laughs> totally. Oh, my God. This is really good. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll help you All with right, something. So <laughs> <laughs> Seems fair. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot me in, on the other foot. Huh? So, totally. um, how many, so how, how can people find you and what can, and they get to what you're up to? Let's do that. Oh, well, they can find me right now and what I'm doing in the soul coaching. The, the, what am I journaling to the center of your soul? Which I've signed up for, by the way. just froze for a second did I lose you I'm not sure okay, I'm not sure you're still there or not so I think I better talk otherwise it can be silenced on this end um, oh, I'm not sure why I can't see you on the broadcast I just lost you all right so to wrap up then <laughs> we lost it Gina's got this free five-day um, journal to the center of your heart, center of your soul, which I've signed up for. So if you're interested, sign up for that. If you want to find out more about me, watch me at 5 p.m. Pacific time. This is my usual time, which is in an hour. I do my daily Facebook Live called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. Today is number 427, I think, 26. I'll let you know then. And if you want to find out more about working with me, go to my website, which is barryselby.com. And if you want to get a conversation with me to find out where you are and if you want help, go to barryselby.com forward slash chat. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in and do this again sometime, I think. So uh, I appreciate you being here, and I'll see you again soon.